Backstage architecture can be complex. You got some core components, you got some integrations and plugins, some of them in the project, some of them are a little bit external, and you need to understand what are the relation and how they interact. This is why in this video, we are going to deep dive into backstage architecture. Let's go. Backstage is constructed by three main groups. Each group is developed and maintained by the different groups of developers. So the first group at the bottom called the core. Core means everything that is part of the core of Backstage, the art of Backstage. Anytime we need to run one of the core capabilities that we are going to talk about next, like the service catalog, the docs, this is part of the core of Backstage. On top of it, we got the application. Each instance of Backstage is an application. So when we want to deploy Backstage into our own organization, what we do is we create our application, it's built up from core functionalities in it. On top of our own application, we got the plugins. Plugins are maintained by any maintainer that want to extend Backstage and actually put extend functionality to it. It can be part of the Backstage maintainers like Kubernetes plugin. It can be external like a third party, or maybe any other different open source project that actually had its own Backstage plugin. By using those three layers, you can deploy your own Backstage application and then integrate every plugins you want into your own Backstage instance. In Spotify, for example, they do have instance of Backstage with 100 different plugins. Each dev team can utilize other team's plugins or create their own in order to extend their own backstage service catalog deployment. Let's move to the system architecture. Backstage got a really simple system architecture. It got only three services, the front end, the back end, and the database. In some deployment situation, you can deploy the front end and the back end together, which is good for development environment and maybe very small platform portals, but if you go with scale, better go and separate those. The database must be Postgres, it can be managed or deployed within your Kubernetes cluster, it depends on your choice. In development environment, you can use SQLite instead of Postgres, but it's ephemeral database, it means that anytime you are going to restart backstage, uh, you need or to take care of persistency or the data will loss. So it really depends on the solution, I would not go with out Postgres into any production deployment. Each feature or capability in Backstage is part of three main groups. The first group is the core features, features that Backstage is nothing without them. They are deployed by default and turned on by default. The second group is integrations. Some of them are in there out of the box, but you need to configure those. And the last group, the plugins, which can really extend Backstage to be whatever you like. They are not part of Backstage and you need to integrate and configure them manually through your own application. Let's talk about each one of them and break it down. Core capabilities are the heart and the core of Backstage. There are four capabilities that are part of the core. The software catalog, which holds only information about the system and software in the organization. The tech docs, which allows you to write documentation inside Backstage. The search, which allows users to actually search across all the Backstage portal. And the service template that allows to bootstrap services in Backstage much, much faster. Those are part of the core capabilities. If you want to learn more about them, you can go to the previous video in this series and actually see the demo that demonstrates each one of those capabilities. The second group is integrations. Integrations allow you to connect Backstage Portal to multiple and variety of tools that allow to extend the capabilities of Backstage. For example, if you want to add SSO, you can connect Backstage to SSO provider. If you want to fetch the software catalog information from S3 Bucket, you can do that as well, or even to do that from GitHub using the GitHub integration. So you can extend some of the capabilities of the portal using the integrations, or you can use the third group, plugins. The difference is that 
The integrations are part of the product. You just need to configure and use them. Plugins, you need to do everything on your own and integrate them manually. Moving to the third groups, plugins. Plugins can really extend Backstage to do whatever you like. For example, as I said before, in Spotify, they have 100 different plugins written by 50 different developer teams. You can connect it to your CI CD system, monitoring, electric, metrics, whatever system that you want can be integrated as a plugin. You can write your own, you can use third party. What is the downside of these plugins? You need to integrate those usually manually. Go to the code, edit the code as instruction of the plugin installation, and then you would have it in place. The most common plugin is the Kubernetes plugin that allow us in the software catalog to actually see uh, for a specific component, which are the relevant Kubernetes resources relevant to it. There are two main types of plugin. One is the service-backed plugin, which means that you have a service in the same entity or cluster that the Backstage run in, and it actually fetches information from its persistent storage. Uh, usually they're sharing the same database, uh, but it's deployed on a different service in the same system. The other type of plugin is a proxy-backed plugin. It means that Backstage or the frontend will actually redirect to this proxy. The proxy will fetch information, for example, from Argo CD that resides on a different cluster, and then will bring in the information and the information will be available in Backstage. Those are the two main architecture of plugins. Uh, what you need to do in order to integrate plugins, uh, you actually have instructions for each one of the plugins. Usually you need to go into your own application source file, edit them, and for each plugin, there are different instructions. You need to follow them. Uh, the most common one is the Kubernetes plugin, which is almost a core feature. And you can find instruction for it in this website. Now what you want to do is go and actually deploy your own Backstage application. But there are two files that you need to know about in order to start. The first one is the config file. It's called application configuration file. And what it's all is all the information, the configuration about your Backstage application. It means that how you want the software catalog to be, what is the base URL, where you want to fetch your catalog from, the integration configuration, everything will be in the application configuration file. Here is an example, and you can see a lot of parameters in here that you can control your own application. When we add a plugin, we will add the configuration of the plugin to the application configuration file, like the Kubernetes plugin, for example. The second file is the catalog itself. The catalog holds the components in your system. When you deploy your Backstage application for the first time, you reference the relevant catalog. Backstage would load uh, the components from the catalog, and there you have a Backstage with the information in it. You can reference multiple files, you can reference to a Git repo, and then actually Backstage will take the component from there and auto-refresh it all the time. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that now you know much, much better the architecture of Backstage. In the next video, we are going to talk about how to deploy Backstage on Kubernetes. I just mentioned it's a very challenging process, but in the next video, I'm really going to do an hands on lab and show you how to do it on your own. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching.